when it comes to straw, it's a wonderful, flexible material that you can make work with pretty much any kind of design. Ideally, you'd have your bales sourced before you designed your building, so you'd know exactly what their lengths would be. So you'd design your building around known bale lengths, rather than having to kind of customise bales all the time. Darren here has some uh, insulated blocks that have gone up in a twin skin, and then on top of that, a sole plate, so thin strips of timber to support the straw slightly above the plinth wall there. And then the straw bales would be built up with a, a running bond, just like bricks, so the join is, is constantly staggered. You'd take it all the way up to typically seven courses high, and then you'd stake them using some nice long bits of coppiced wood like hazel or ash, and then you would be ready for strimming the walls, clay plaster on the inside and lime plaster on the outside, and then pop the roof on and you're, you're good to go. It can be a very cost-effective way to build. Unequivocally, it's a very cost-effective way to have a house, because your heating and cooling energy loads are potentially so low, particularly if you design with south-facing glazing to capture sunlight, ideally with some thermal mass inside the house behind that glazing, then you can use that as a heat battery, so it'll absorb heat during the day, release heat at night. I know plenty of houses that don't use their heating systems much more than a couple of weeks a year in the, in the depths of winter.